Welcome to Center Court with the Lopes. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of GCU men's basketball, Bryce Drew. And Bryce, so glad uh, we could be chatting today after a debut performance uh, and back-to-back -back games, and they're both victories. You've got to feel good about this team early on, I would hope. You know, it's very uh, strange year, as we know. We've talked about this before. And uh, not having scrimmages, not having played other uh, teams, you never know what's going to happen when you get out there and you see different actions. The other thing that made it difficult is we've never uh, been able to scout really these teams because it was their first games. So it was hard in preparation to get our guys prepared to, to, be, re uh, to be what to be ready for. Um, but proud of the guys. Thought we came out, especially the first game against Grambling, had a lot of energy. Um, got off to a quick start against them. And then in our second game against Benedictine, it was kind of the opposite. We got off to a slower start and then picked it up uh, as the half continued. What's it like, you know, getting, you can't replicate, obviously, in practice what game conditions are like. There's so much, not only trying to figure out, you know, the players and a lot of newcomers, but your staff, too, the chemistry, game management, game situations, all of that played in to the first two games of the season. So getting your staff up and, and ready and getting that flow and chemistry has to, has to be something that you're looking at early on, too. Definitely. With, with, the, with the new staff, new players, um, th th there's little kinks. You know, you just work out whether it's terminology or if you're on the same page talking about things. And, and um, you know, the nice thing is, is, is there's experience on our bench um, from a playing standpoint and from a coaching standpoint. And so that helps you get to that, that indecision a lot quicker. And uh, also, I think with our players on the court, you know, when you have a point guard like Javon, um, he can make things go a lot smoother by getting the ball where it needs to go and, uh, and just be able to control the tempo out there on the court. Yeah, and he's looked uh, sharp here early on. Another guy that's looked sharp that we want to lead things off with is a newcomer from Wichita State, Ashbourne Midgard. Had uh, a career high in rebounds with 15 in game one and then a career high in points in, in game two. What have you seen from the big man? Well, he's as big as me and you put together, so that's a good starting point. That's a good start. You know, out on the court. And, you know, I, I think um, you can be big and not be productive, but what he's been is he's big, but he's been productive, and, and especially on both ends. I, I love how he's rebounded the ball defensively. Um, he's been able to, to get you know 15 in our first game, and then second game he kind of became more offensive and, and was able to score with his size around the basket. But um, he's off to a great start, and, and hopefully that will continue throughout the year. Well, you said the word defense, and that's something that, that we've seen too. We've seen some pretty tight defense from your team in these first two games. Definitely a lot to improve on, but, um, but we like the focus that our guys are, are, are paying on that side of the floor. Um, we can see that there's an effort there and they're, they're locked in and they're, they're really trying to do what, what we're practicing. But there's a long way to go. You know, there's a long way to go with just our ability to get through screens, our ability to get the help side. Um, you know, our ability to find shooters better, which we didn't do as well in our last game. And so um, it's definitely a work in progress, but we've taken a nice step from the summer, I think, to now where we are defensively. Lopes fans are familiar with Alessandro Laver being here and being a senior now, uh, but what can a guy like Mitgard do to, to help Laver out down low in particular, and what have you seen as he's looked pretty sharp here in these first two games? You, you know, Ali has done a really good job this summer with our strength coach, uh, Jordan Jackson. He's worked on his body a lot. He's gotten faster. Um, he's been able to work to guard the perimeter a little bit better. And it's a big change for him. You know, last year he was in the post the whole game, you know, bang, and now we're asking him to be a little quicker on the perimeter. So he's having to adapt to that and also playing with another big down low. Um, the paint's not as open for him just to, you know, roam in the post. He needs to make quicker moves, um, sometimes stay on his half of the court, you know, on his post moves. So um, I think those two have gotten a really good chemistry in a short amount of time. Um, they play really well high-low together, and, um, and I think it helps Ali save some physicality that Ash can go do and rebound and let Ali get out and run an offense. Now we've seen uh, early on here in a kind of a nine-man rotation. You've uh, the 12 players with points against Benedictine. I would imagine as, as it gets closer to conference play, will that be refined a little bit? Or what, are your, what were your early expectations as far as your rotation yeah, is concerned? You know, Barry, we like our depth. We feel like on certain nights, you know, when you, when you get to certain parts of our roster that any, any one of our players could step up and, and take minutes and, and help us win a game. Uh, but ideally, you know, eight, a ninth guy coming in is, is where we want to be uh, when we get to conference play. But um, everyone's going to have opportunities to, to be in that top eight or nine. And um, it'll be fun to see kind of kind of who who rises and, and who continues to play well on the court to, to gain those spots. COVID, we touched on the conditions and the, the court and obviously what you're dealing with from a scheduling standpoint, that that's always uh, an interesting scenario too, uh, week in and week out. Uh, what was it like in the arena? Uh, obviously, Lopes fans are familiar with a packed arena and the havoc's going crazy. 
but the the atmosphere is pretty good for the first it two was games. Good. I, I think it's great, and, and I never I haven't experienced this, the true Havoc experience, but it's been really good uh, so far. Again, our school is phenomenal with the, the cutouts they've done, with, with, the, with the game uh, management, the game operations. Uh, from a coach, from a player standpoint, I know we all extremely appreciate the efforts that GCU makes to make it as lively environment. And, and, and I, I would say it's probably the liveliest in the country now because I turn on TV and I see no cutouts. I see just, you know, no cheerleaders, no band. And, and you know, we have some, you know, effect going on here. So, so it is, I think it's great. It, you know, it makes a really good atmosphere to play still. Coming up, after missing last season, he fought his way back to the court. Redshirt senior Oscar Freyer shares his story. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetotheclause.com. Center Court with the Lopes is presented by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. And also brought to you by Cox Business. Come out and play. Welcome back to Center Court. Barry Butel alongside Bryce Drew, the head coach of GCU men's basketball. And Bryce, one of those players that Lopes fans are familiar with is Oscar Freyer. Unfortunately, he didn't play last year as he was uh, ineligible to play, but he's come back. And what are your impressions early on from Oscar? Well, well first, don't worry about basketball. Let's talk about Oscar as a person. Um, he has the ability just to light up a room. And I think that's something that our staff has really enjoyed about him. When he comes in the gym, you know he's there. He lifts the spirits up, makes our practices better. So, so that alone is, is invaluable as a coach to have just a personality like that on your team. Now, when you throw in the basketball side, then it's even more of a luxury for a coach because he defends really well. Uh, he's extremely athletic. Uh, what he's done really well this summer is he's put on weight in, 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 the, um, in the weight room. And so he's put on close to 20 pounds um, from when he first arrived in the summer. Um, he's shooting the basketball much better, and, um, and he's just a really fun guy to coach. Well, we sat down recently with Oscar Freyer, to, and he shared a little bit about his basketball journey. And as I'm looking up in the clouds, I can feel my feet. I started playing basketball fourth grade for uh, Church League, CYO, um, St. Beats. Those are my guys, man. I, I don't take them for granted to this day. Family means everything to me, man. Um, not having a father growing up, I feel like that definitely has brought me closer to my family, especially my mom's side. Um, 
it's, there is, they've instilled literally everything into me. Like my characteristics, my traits, my my humbleness, my love for the game of basketball, my love just just being a good person. I feel like that's all that they all ever wanted from me. Initially, I was committed to the University of California, Berkeley. Things didn't work out there. Coach Marley came to one of my practices, and I didn't know who Coach Marley was. From there, I, I mean, it just took off. I took my visit. Crazy. One word, crazy. It's a love and it's a crazy fan base, man. Anybody who comes here and gets to witness that in person is it's amazing. I mean, they come with us everywhere, literally any and every gym. Like, sometimes we have more fans in, in uh, opponents' gyms than they do. That's big time for us, for sure. There was a lot of distractions off the court. There was a lot of distractions on the court as well. Um, just coming in and not being focused and not being a, uh, just having a, the, the wrong crowd around me, I believe. Having to uh, literally like lean on my teammates and lean on my guys that, that, uh, that want to see me win and like letting them down, I feel like that was the, the biggest part for me. My mother, she's been my backbone through it all. Um, she supported me through the good, through the bad. She's definitely stated that, you know, you got to make decisions and you got to change. It meant the world to me because I don't want to go through the same things that I went through last year. Um, breaking habits, um, just having the, the, the will and the want to be better and be a better person and be a better person on the court and off the court. I definitely think this team is capable of a championship, for sure. With the guys that we have around, we have a lot of good guys, um, from the coaching staff all the way down to the last guy on the bench. It's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take a lot of uh, commitment, it's going to take a lot of endurance, a lot of putting ourselves in the right situations. We've only been with these coaches for about the last two to three months. I can see myself talking to these guys for the rest of my life because at the end of the day, they do relate to us off the court and they relate to us on the court. They instilled a lot of uh, characteristic traits in us that you, know, you can take with you for a lifetime. It was times where I wanted to give up on myself and I know that I couldn't because these guys are sitting here watching me. My mom is sitting here watching me, my, my family, my brothers, my, uh, my whole support system, they're just sitting here watching me and I, I knew that if I was to give up on myself, they, would, they wouldn't like that and I know I wouldn't like that. So I know that I'd have to come back out here and uh, make up for it, for sure. Up next, the Molly Miller era has begun for women's hoops. We take a look back at their opening day. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. For the GCU women's hoops team, their non-conference slate rolls on as we take a look at their upcoming schedule brought to you by Cox Business. The Lopes host Loyola Marymount on Saturday at 1.00. 
Then on December 9th, they take on the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona at 6. Both of those games will be taking place in GCU Arena and can also be streamed on the Lope Nation app, gculopes.com, or your GCU YouTube channel. Before we move ahead, let's take a look back to the first game in the Molly Miller era. The lights are up at GCU Arena for the first time in 2020, 2021, and they'll take on the team from the big sky, the Wildcats of Weber State University. Here's Taylor Caldwell getting the rebound, bringing it up to Kennedy Shorts, and the little one-hander in the lane is good, gets the ball. And Shorts now sees daylight, but has it knocked away, gets it back, puts it up, puts it in, score it, count it, foul, send her to the free throw line, and exactly what Molly Miller wanted, she wanted to get Kennedy Shorts involved, and she is obliged. Here's Lauda Pieta, out front, can dribble with either hand, prefers the left, the spin around shot is good. And able to put up those two free throw attempts. Pieta lobbing over the top, catch and shoot on the alley-oop is beautiful for Shorts, nine points for Shorts. Streaking down the right side, Taylor Caldwell. She'll stop, she'll pop. And Pencer playing catch. Now the trap, and it's knocked away. Bodice came from the weak side, makes the steal, and she'll put it up and in. Shot clock it. Off the hip of Toms, can't get to it. Scramble, Brown will get it. She'll crash into Toms, put it up, score it, count it, foul. And Nana Jackson inside for Scott. Beautiful head fake, puts it up and in. Side on the perimeter, now for Jackson. Around the screen, sees daylight. Scoop up, higher, Jink jumper drop. Through, and Jackson comes away with it. Jackson will challenge one on two, puts it up, puts it in, and use the transition. Caldwell stutter step drive, put it up, put it in, score it, count it, foul, send TC to the free throw line, clock. Caldwell stutter step, sees daylight all the way to the hoop for two. That layup by Scott was her third field goal of the quarter, and Lada Pieta just forced the turnover out front. A successful foray to the Molly Miller era, who has still in six plus years as a head coach on the NCAA level, not lost a home regular season game. Coming up with the first game in the books, we bring in head coach Molly Miller to get her thoughts on the season opener. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of, and the cheese, it's the exact right amount of, whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's, yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back to Center Court with the Lopes. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the GCU women's basketball team, Molly Miller. And so great to chat with you after uh, the debut. And wow, what a debut performance from your team. Uh, a huge win. Yeah, I'm just proud of the effort. Honestly, that's the thing that we talk about. That's the controllable, especially in this circumstance and this dynamic when you don't know what day, what's going to come, if you're going to play. Um, so every day we step on the court, we talk about it being a blessing. And every day that blessing needs to be utilized in a way that we get better. And um, I think in practice, I told the kids, we always make practice harder than the games. And I think they realized that last uh, week when you know they came out and there was a spark and there was lots of energy and effort and our defense generated a lot of our offense. It was good to see that. The points were a D1 record here for, for GCU in 93, but 
that, that's a typical Molly Miller coach team, right? I mean, I think we sat here a couple months ago we and did. I said we're going to sit, we're going to play fast. So. You did play fast. Uh, yeah, we want to get a lot of possessions within the ball game. We forced 27 turnovers, so I thought that was huge. The more we can get the ball, the better, and the more we can score. The setting that mark, of course, and, and uh, from an offensive standpoint, but it starts with defense, too, and you definitely talked about that as well a couple of months ago, and we saw it again the other night. Yeah, we just want to try to rattle teams. Um, even our pressure will force some teams to make some mistakes that they don't typically do, um, and it might not be generated by a steal, but you know, just our rotations and being there, and then them knowing what's coming, a trap, that can make them nervous and get out of rhythm with their offense. So I thought we did a good job. Um, you know, in the past, we've had teams kind of abandon what they do offensively because they couldn't initiate a, a pass or start the offense, and so they're like, like just go motion or dribble drive. And we kind of saw that the other day. They didn't really run too many sets that they had run in the previous years against us. And I think that's just because we make it really, really tough um, for teams to run sets and run plays. Well, they're tough trying to run anything when you kind of hit them in the mouth early. 29-10. You certainly set the tone early and, and kind of dictated the game, much like maybe a prize fighter would do to get that first shot in, right? Yeah, you know, I wanted a single digit quarter, but I guess uh -huh. 10's okay. <laughs> um, we, were, we were really, it was good to see that first basket go in for Kennedy Shorts, you know, someone who um, was definitely a role player and kind of plug in minutes last year. So I think when everyone saw her make her first basket, like, oh, okay, we can do this too, let's go. And for them to see it come to fruition, for a coach, that's almost everything. And that was just great to see it all come together and you know game one there's a lot of things I go back on film I've probably watched about four times now just knowing that oh we've got a lot of work to do and a long ways to go but it was a good start just again with our energy and effort it looks like a like a crowd out there but you know and the and the game operations does a great job what, what, what was it, what was the feel like on the court without a packed house you know I, I still think we can claim one of the best game environments in the country I mean it's amazing kind of the resources um, putting all those cutouts into the the stands and seeing faces making it feel full but also the sound blasting in you know chanting defense defense and then the band and the cheerleaders and the dance and those 250 Havocs chiming in with them. Um, it's special, there's nothing like it because you play this game because you love it, but also there's an excitement and intensity come when everyone else plays or watches you play this game that you love. And I think for us, just putting that effort into that part of the game, especially in this year's circumstance, um, it really shows the dedication that GCU has to their athletic programs. Taylor Caldwell coming back from that, that injury, uh, 21 points, a career high for her. What did you see from her the other night. That's one that makes your heart happy. You know, it's a, a long time coming from an ACL. You, know, you, you get something snatched away from you that you've loved doing. And um, that work and the effort she put into physical therapy, it's almost like two steps forward, one step back. Two, I mean, it's just a lot of mixed emotions. There's highs and there's good days and there's bad days and there's lows. So for her to come out and have the game she did, you know, I think you can kind of almost breathe a sigh of relief and say, it's behind her, that injury is no more, time to move forward, and I'm super excited for her. Up next, a couple of notable programs hit the GCU hardwood in the next couple of weeks. We'll get Coach Drew's take on the matchups when we return. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of, and the cheese, it's the exact right amount of, whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's, yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. 
<sighs> I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. It's time for the Talking Stick Resort Play of the Week. Play in style. I hope I'm seeing the same, I'm seeing the same thing you are. Look at oh this. my! Nothing wrong with his knee on that play right, right there. there. My oh. goodness. That was Oscar Freire ish right there. It's time to take a look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by Cox Business. The Lopes continue their home stretch at GCU Arena with a couple of notable programs hitting the GCU hardwood. Nevada brings their Wolf Pack to the desert on December 11th, followed by the matchup everyone has been waiting for the Lopes and the Sun Devils in their first D1 meeting on December 13th. Welcome back to Center Court with the Lopes. Barry Butel alongside Bryce Drew, the head coach of GCU Men's Basketball. And as you look ahead to the upcoming games, as you continue to ramp up, I'm anticipating that you really want to, and you know, this is new to you and your staff, you're this, this team. So what are you looking for as you ramp up to conference play and some big games up ahead as well? Well, you, you know, you never know you're going to play that team until the ball goes up. And you know, we learned that firsthand, you know, uh, last week we had three different games scheduled in one week, you know, for one date, which we finally got the third, third one to work out. And so it's obviously going to be, you know, ever changing uh, throughout, throughout the season, especially the non-conference. But, um, you, you know, we're, we're excited as the season gets going. I think every game out, we, we see improvement. We see a lot of more holes we have to fill and really work on in practice and try to get better for that next game. And I think as we get going, we'll get more film on teams where early in the season it's really hard. You don't have any current film on the current players or what they're doing schematically. So now we'll get to be able to see film, be able to scout a little bit better heading into games. Some big games coming up. I mean, uh, Nevada uh, here at home and then follow that up with Arizona State, a game a lot of people were hoping for a, a packed arena. But a couple of great teams coming up. San Francisco had a big win in their uh, recent action as well. So the, the opponents, at least on paper here, Good Lord willing, uh, it definitely ramps up for you guys. Yeah, very tough stretch. Uh, Nevada, you know, returns several players. They just won at Nebraska, which is a really good win for them. And like you said, San Francisco just beat Virginia, um, which is a signature win for, for that program. And then obviously Arizona State, you know, top 15. And, and, you know, they have draft picks on their team we're going to have to defend. So it's going to be a very tough stretch, you know, coming up. I'll throw Colorado in. We got Colorado right after the San Francisco game, who just won at Kansas State. So, um, so, you know, we really need to get a lot better these next couple weeks uh, to be ready for that competition coming. Well, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's great being with you again. Great to be with you as well. Great to be with you as well. And thanks for tuning in to Center Court with the Lopes.